Though it doesn't look like we're going to get that birdie because I couldn't split the boobies. If that's the only sentence somebody has heard in this entire video, they are going to think the strat man needs medical attention. Welcome back, all you Strat fans. If you have returned, Fatty really appreciates you not bailing on him after he was on absolute tilt. In the second round of Clemensdorf. We are now here. On our off day. We have our offy coffee. Ready to go. We are going to play around. In the Strat Cave. And as you can see. I have a slightly new attire. As I am in my sunsy onesie. And here we are in the opening tee. Of this week's fun course. It is called the Legend of Camelot which was created by Sir Thomas Westfall. He was the creator of the first course that the Strat Man did on his off days. It was a very unique course, which had some ridiculous elevations, and the Strat Man ripped him a new hole. But Sir Thomas assures me that this is a much more fair-playing course. He's proud of it. The 15th hole is apparently a little nod to the sword and the stone, so that's pretty cool. I can't wait to see that. So let's see how this goes. This opening tee shot has lots of landing area if we do miss the fairway, but let's try not to because it's a beautiful landing spot. Bit of an early pull, but a strong kick left into the fairway. It's a very nice water in the background. See a tiny bridge way off in the distance. Oh, and it really opens up into the vast ocean sea. The ocean seas. That didn't even make sense. Pulled that with a fast swing, but what a kick off that hill. Thank you for that one, Sir Thomas. You saved the day. And we missed the opening bird. So we'll just tap that par in and say, thanks for a nice opening hole. That is definitely a sentence... You do not want to say after you have been intimate with somebody, but I digress. Nice tee shot for hole number two. We do not want a slow swing to end up in that water. So we'll plop it right in the fairway. We're only two holes in, and I like this course a lot. We have a tricky pin placement at the back. I think I'm going to play this pitching wedge and try and kick off of this ridge. Bit of a wonky swing, but it looks like it's going to work out all right. Oh, yes. It's amazing how much better the strap man can do on a golf course when you don't have to hit to six inch wide fairways that are all surrounded by skinny trees that somehow every single leaf knocks the ball down as though it has the weight of a thousand men. Okay, that's my last rant about Clemensdorf. And we tap in that birdie. We're one under through two. The legend of Camelot is going to try to make a legend of the Stratman. And another tee shot that's just a beauty to look at. Nice surrounding of trees, but they're not going to be impeding this hole, so that's important. The way this green plays, I'm going to try this 5-iron that I will de-loft to cut through some of the wind. Because I would just like to hit short and see if it can ride that ridge around towards the hole. That's my bad. I'm curious how that would have worked out. I just did not swing it well at all. Now we're left trying to pitch this out of here in a very difficult position. Up. Kick. Slow down. This might work okay. Hold on there. Wow, what a save. Horrible shot off the tee, but if I can tap this in and save par, like that, then, well played, Batty. I think if you haven't done so, this is a great time to hit that like button on this video. If not for me, do it for this course, which after three holes, it's a great one. And we're just off the fairway. Swing's feeling a little wonky right now. Oh, it 
came out quite a bit more than I thought it would, so that's actually a pretty decent shot overall. Here's a doozy. Moves quite a bit left to right, and then it starts to go right to left about halfway. But I think the speed off the start here is faster, so I'm going to aim left and see what happens. It moves, and now does it move back? Oh, I went too far left to start. And I don't mind that pacing because all that left us with was a tap-in birdie. Did you see that majestic shot of me standing by the hole, looking out over the ocean waters? I'll loop it again for you when this video is edited together. Because that's a beauty. This green is way over here. Massive cliffside. The wind is a little bit at the back, and it's slightly downhill. I think maybe, just maybe, we can get there with the three wood. Otherwise, we have to play it way out here, and just be smart, and then try and hit it close. Mmm. That is feeling risky. I'm gonna try it. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. I'm too nervous. I can't do it. <laughs> I scared myself out. I'm gonna go back towards the fairway. Props to you, Thomas, for making me think. I feel like if I was playing with Masters Clubs, I would definitely take that shot. We're going to play it off to the right because it pushes down below our feet. It held that line pretty good. Which I did not want. So now we are left with a long birdie putt. Let's go here. Still didn't put it too far enough out. So this was a nice, enjoyable par four. Again, I have liked every hole so far. Through five holes, we have gone par birdie, par birdie, par. Do we have a birdie ready? Very interesting hole. I like it. It looks like you're hitting between two very spaced out boobies. So let's try and split the cleavage. Fast swing. Ew. Odd stance in this bunker. Very odd stance. It's pretty much the line I wanted. Oh, that rough really killed it, though. So it doesn't look like we're going to get that birdie because I couldn't split the boobies. If that's the only sentence somebody has heard in this entire video, they are going to think the strap man needs medical attention. This is a tricky par. But it's all of my fault at this point. And I just missed it. There she be. So don't miss that narrow fairway. As we move downhill, I club down to an 8 iron as I think, with it being about 30 feet downhill, the wind is at the back a little bit. This distance might be all right. And I've also added some loft because I just don't want to go long. Hit and hold, baby. Don't go long. Oh, that was close. Guess I could have lofted up even more. Oh, we did. Right on the edge. And we'll tap in that par. And That was another really nice hole. I think at this point, I can just assume every hole is going to be nice. Again... That's probably a sentence you don't want to say in a public place before you are intimate with somebody. And we're going to try to drive it over this bunker if possible. Oh, very fast swing. That was gross. My bad. Just clubbed a 7 iron out of there. It was buried deep. A chance to chip and putt for par. Chip shots are my least favorite shots in this game. I still have not figured out how to figure out the distance, how to control any of the spin. I usually end up going way past the hole. Like that. If anybody has tips for the strap man, comment them below. Reach out to me on social media. If you can fix my chipping game, I will be indebted to you. Oh, over the top of the hole. So we messed that up off the tee, and then we kept messing it up to take a bogey. We started off really good, 
Par, birdie, par, birdie, par. And then now it's gone bogey, par, bogey. So let's try and fix that. Ooh, look at this. Nice par five. Very open. Scary shot. As again, you have to hit at the water. Try not to go into it. So I've gone down to a three hybrid here. If I put a little bit of loft onto it, it should be enough to hit and kind of check up and roll down that little tiny ridge. A lot of fast swings today as we try to flop our way to some success. Chance at the par. Oh, wait, no. It's a birdie. It's a birdie chance. I forgot this was a par five for a second there. Let's tap this one in. Come on. Oh, it's short. Decent line, but not good pace. Hit it a little soft and it fell below the hole. Look at that view. This feels like a golf course I would actually like to be on in real life. From here, it looks like a house. But as we zoom in, it's grandstand. Fast swing, but this one wasn't too severe. So we're in the rough. Didn't shank it into the sand, which I guess is okay. We're going to try and hit this three hybrid out of the nasties. That's a good spot. Left with a chip, which I do not like. Oh, that was a much better controlled chip. And a big break for the birdie. Come on. Thank you. Let's try not to have a fast swing this time. That's better. Just when we needed a perfect drive, we got one. Going a little bit uphill. Got this gap wedge. We see the TV tower off to the right. Oh, there's the castle way off in the distance. Beautiful. Bit of a push to the left. Come back off this ridge. Oh, I guess it was not as steep as it kind of looked like. Oh, it just held that line. Oh, okay. I got thrown off by the zigzagging grid. But we got the par. That works for me. So through 11 holes, we are minus one. And we're closing in on the 15th where we can see the sword and the stone. But first, we have to get through this tricky par three. Bean-shaped green. I don't want to go right. That looks like a pretty good line. Hold on, you. Uh-oh. No. Oh. I really don't know how it kept going that far right when I aimed quite a bit left, and it was barely any wind coming down. As we tap it up, and we watch the birdie drop. Not the way I wanted it, but it did work out. Offy coffee is the best. I can already feel myself relaxing a little, getting back to the type of game Batty likes to play. I say as I fast swing again, I don't know how to fix that. We are coming out of some incredibly thick rough here. I'm just going to aim this three wood, and I don't think it's going to go very far. Ugh, that's what we were hoping for. Just get out into the fairway. Try and get close enough I can pitch and putt for par. All right, we're going to try to flop this sand wedge and see if it can hit and roll a bit closer to the hole. There's the hit. And almost there. We have a chance to save the par. And we did it. Another nice tee shot where we again see the castle in the distance. I like that... Sir Thomas has laid this out, so you get a view of that castle in the majority of these holes. I tried to go slow there, but it's still a fast swing. Help me. Somebody save me from myself. I'm basically going to have to try and hit this six iron and see if we can get it up over this hill. Oh, just cleared. Hopping up there. And leave ourselves a long birdie putt. Going to aim it off to the left as it goes over this ridge, moves to the right, and then it starts to go a little bit left. Going towards the hole. Come back. Move back. Oh, what a bomb. Yes. I believe that's what they call scrambling for your life. 
Horrible D shot. Decent iron to get back in play and then just bomb a birdie in the dead center of the cup. And that brings us to hole 15, which Sir Thomas tells me there is a sword in the stone. Is that it? Oh, look at that. There we are. What does it say on it? OB? If you hit this rock, are you out of bounds? Or does this mean something else? I might be exposing some sort of ignorance here, but what does OB mean with a sword in a stone? All right, let's ignore this sword for a moment. But look at that, it's so nice. How can you not look at it? All right, I'm gonna zoom in. So we have a nice little ridge here that moves in towards the hole. And let's hope this works out. Up she goes, started to blow. That's the ridge, kick over. Ah, uh, did, but a bit too long. Leaves us with a chance at the birdie putt here. Again, looking directly at the sword in the stone. Do I have the power? Do I have the power? You bet I do. So that was worth the wait. Sir Thomas told me about the sword in the stone hole, and I'm glad to have seen it. And now we move away as we drive out into the fairway. I think the first time I played a Sir Thomas course, I said I could not wait for the round to end. This one, I just want to keep playing it. This feels like a pretty good shot. Oh, yes. Just to the right of the hole. And a relatively straightforward looking birdie putt, if I do say so myself. Right in the heart. The strap man is on a bit of a roll right now. Which, now that I've said that, I feel like I will probably shank this tee shot. It is a par four that you can drive towards the green, and I am going to. It was a bit fast, so it pulled slightly to the right, but we're close. But we'll see what we can do from here, as we have a gap wedge to chip out with. In some thick stuff. Almost caught that ridge. And we have another birdie putt. Just a bit off to the right. It's about 15 feet. And we made another one. Holy patty. This back nine feels like I am just tearing through it. Even though I'm hitting some pretty horrible shots. And we're ending on a par five. Which when you look out you think, where is the green? But it's all the way over to the right here. So we're going to try to drive it towards the fairway. Oh, and that held on. Great. That was a solid angle. Cut off some distance so that we can go for this green in two. And I've clubbed down to a three hybrid so it can hit short of the hole and roll as we enter this maxi pad shaped green. Oh, it kicked right. But that's okay, because this is a par 5, and it leaves us at a pretty good distance that we should be able to lob it up there and keep it close. That's pretty damn close. And the legend of Camelot ends with a tap-in birdie. It's almost like this course was made for the strat man. Look at that! Ah, uh, that's a tale of two nines, if I've ever seen one. Finish it even par through 9. And then we shot a blazing 7-under on the back 9 alone. That was pretty great. Um, I, I mean, there's plenty that I could say about the Legend of Camelot course. I think first off is, great job, Sir Thomas. Every single hole was enjoyable to play. There's some thought that you have to put into about positioning. There's a little bit of risk-reward on many of the holes. And unlike your previous course, uh, you do not get punished for making good shots. You get rewarded for those. And that is the sign of a really good golf course. So thank you for inviting me to play The Legend of Camelot. And if there's anybody out there that would like the Stratman to play a course of your own, uh, he is always looking for a new course to play in his sunsy onesie while drinking his offy coffee and just playing around in the Strat Cave. What a great time. So if you haven't done so yet, make sure you smash that subscribe button. 
Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And most importantly, stay babby.